Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white artifact deck as requested by my supporters on Patreon. This is a deck featuring a lot of cards from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, including the Fabrication Foundry, which gives us another 2-mana ramp artifact that can help cast our other artifacts and activate abilities of artifacts, and can eventually also get stuff back from our graveyard, so it's quite synergistic, especially with multiple copies of Mightstone and Weakstone, which can kind of replace themselves and get an extra copy out of the graveyard while either drawing two cards or taking out an opposing creature and this can also help us make a lot of extra mana and as you can see from Urza Planeswalker we're also playing with Urza Lord Protector so we can melt Urza and Mightstone into Urza Planeswalker which is a lot of fun and can easily take over a game. Then another card from the Lost Caverns is Thousand Moons Smithy, a 4-mana legendary artifact. When it enters, it generates a huge Gnome Soldier token with power and toughness each equal to the number of artifacts and or creatures we control, so it can get very large very quickly in this deck. And then at the beginning of our pre-combat main phase, we may tap 5 untapped artifacts and or creatures we control, and if we do, transform Smithy into Barracks of the Thousand, which is a legendary artifact land making white mana, and whenever we use the barracks to cast an artifact or creature spell we get to generate another one of those gnome tokens so that can also get out of hand very quickly and gives us a very powerful late game now a neat trick we can set up with the smithy is to activate mirax in our upkeep that way we get to make an extra Fraxin might token which also counts as an artifact which we can now maybe help tap to transform smithy into the barracks and then ideally we don't want to tap the smithy itself because if it transforms and we didn't tap it then barracks will also be untapped so we can immediately use it and generate another one of those gnomes so that's the ideal sequencing then we also have two copies of the unstable glyph bridge which is a very nice sweeper for our deck we get to choose a creature with power two or less for each player and then destroy all creatures except the chosen ones and we often have creatures that can survive our own glyph bridge such as urza at two power and the new akal pakal a 1-5 saying at the beginning of each player's end step if an artifact entered the battlefield under our control we get to look at the top two cards of our library putting one in hand and the other in our graveyard so this can also activate pretty easily in our deck and we can even use it during the opponent's turn thanks to mirex making a might during their turn and we also have the spring loaded saw blades as an artifact with flash that can come into play and deal five damage to a tapped creature an opponent controls so that can be a nice removal spell early and then later we can also crack with artifact ideally using an artifact from our graveyard and then transform it into the chariot a 5-5 vehicle that can be crewed pretty easily and then we also have three copies of Market Gnome as an O3 blocker, just a nice early creature to play defense against aggro. And then when it dies, we gain one life and draw a card. And the same happens if we exile the Gnome using a craft ability. So if we don't have an artifact in the graveyard, crafting using the Gnome is also good value. And then at five mana, we already mentioned Mightstone and Weakstone, which is perfect for ramping into our expensive artifacts as well, or use our various activated abilities. And at the top of our curve, we've got two copies of Cityscape level an 8-8 Trampler and when we cast it and when it attacks we get to destroy up to one and target a non-land permanent and replace it with a tapped power stone token and we also have four copies of Thran Spider which will generate a power stone token for each player so this symmetrical although we're of course going to make better use of the power stone than most other decks and then we can use the seven mana ability to look at the top four cards of our library revealing an artifact to put into our hand so that can also provide a nice bit of card advantage if the game stalls out and then in terms of early ramp, besides our foundry, we've got four copies of Automated Artificer, a 1-3 creature making colorless mana for artifacts or activated abilities, and we can even cast it after playing a Mightstone and Weakstone with the two colorless. And then we also have two copies of the Iron Crag, which is legendary, so we're only playing two copies here. And that pretty much wraps it up. Our mana base, besides Mirex, also has two copies of Field of Ruin, which we can also pretty easily activate with cards like Mightstone and Weakstone, and our various Power Stone tokens to maybe take out opposing lands. A Blast Stone can be effective against aggro if they've got a lot of 1-drops especially, so we can immediately blow it up, but we can also take it up and deal with a larger permanence. And then two copies of the Restless Anchorage as a 2-3 flyer if we activate it, and when it attacks we also get to create a map token, which also has excellent synergy throughout our deck, giving us another artifact for the various gnome tokens. 
and then a few more blue white dual lands for mana fixing and then a soaring city and Iganjo can also maybe be channeled using our various power stone tokens and cards like the artificer making mana for abilities and they can also maybe get a discount from Urza or Akal Pakal. So yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Tapped Anchorage, turn to Foundry, Thran Spider, and then we'll have quite a bit of mana for artifacts. Up against a blue black. So I don't think the uh, Power Stone token will help the opponent too much. Looks like Esper, maybe Esper Legends. Yep. Okay, can double spell Spider and Gnome. Which looks good. Turn three Rafine, right on cue. And they can grow Danik here. Can't quite trade for it. Discarding go for the throat, which won't be very good in this matchup. Okay, Glyph Bridge. Does have some potential here in this matchup. Could um, hang on to my Thrain Spider. And then I guess for now we wouldn't be doing a whole lot. Or we can Glyph Bridge, keep Spider, opponent does get to keep Rafine. So might be better to wait. And then I could still play a Thrain Spider, even if we're gonna lose Spider and Gnome. Would allow us to maybe double block. And then we're hoping our opponent keeps growing Rafine. Because if they don't grow Rafine, we could double block now with double spider. So we're kind of forcing them to in a way. Right, just Rafine attacking. I guess the power stones are helpful in activating Plaza. I'm okay with the use I Ganjo. Discarding a Schooner. And then now we can just activate a Thrain Spider, which we can do at any point. So happy enough passing the turn. Alright, Bat now sadly can snipe or Glyph Bridge. But we could find another copy with a spider. And a wedding announcement. Okay. I guess there's also the Restless Anchorage which we could activate now. If we want to triple block. Which is reasonable. Activate Anchorage, triple block Rafine. And then they don't have nearly as much pressure in play. While well, the shields are down on Plaza. I Ganjo could also come in handy. So we're back on Activate Thrain Spider, which doesn't leave much mana. Would love to find a Might Stone and Weak Stone. Can maybe take out the bats. Opponent just passing the turn here. Well, the uh, saw blades are not going to be very effective if our opponent knows about it. Another foundry is also not all that exciting. So we could still get the blades just in case. And now I could try to main phase Thrain Spider in case we find a 2-drop we want to play right away. But uh, I'll just pass it back. We're not in a hurry. 
Hopefully our late game is going to be a bit more powerful than the opponents once we start casting levelers and transforming Urza. Opponent gets Rafine back. So a bit of a staring contest here. Okay, Virtue of Loyalty, scary. That's a swing and a miss. And the smithy isn't bad. Okay, so probably running out high Gunjo now. Play smithy and then next turn we could uh, transform it. Had I grabbed another foundry instead of Saw blades, we would have been able to still activate Spider now. Time for Rafine. And a destroy evil on our token. That's too bad. Pona's gonna go all out, except for the bat, which. Well, never mind. Pona's sending the bat anyway. So they might regret that decision now. Get to take out the bats. And then a glyph bridge can wipe the board. So Gnome's gonna die anyway. Okay, still want to transform Smithy, and then definitely tapping one spider, power stones, saw blades, and foundry, and then I can cast a glyph bridge, although it's gonna take out the token I generate here, unfortunately, but that's okay. So we get to keep Spider, opponent doesn't get to keep anything. And we could still send the Anchorage. And then any card we draw now that's not a land can synergize with our barracks. Can now also craft with artifacts. And another Spider's excellent. Tidebinder to counter the triggered ability, nice. Okay, so that's gonna try and shut down our barracks for good. That's gonna happen. So now it no longer has that ability. Yeah, that does remove kind of our inevitability here. So now could try and transform one of these. Could also keep digging with Thran Spider, maybe find a leveler to destroy the Tide Binder, which seems more important. And then we might have some uh, mana left here to cast something we find. And just gonna be Gnome or Foundry. I'll grab a Gnome, which we can craft with. And then I may as well explore. Alright, Mindstone and Tweakstone looks good. Bonus got one card left, Danik in the graveyard. And a Schooner is their final card here. Yeah, the Virtue of Loyalty is still a bit of a problem. We can start by drawing with Mightstone, or we could take out the Tidebinder while we still can, which will then free up the barracks, although it's kind of the flying threat that's a problem now. So I think the key is still to find Leveler or Urza, so we want to try and draw here if possible. And then 
Might want to leave Foundry available. Not the best set of draws. So, now what? Transform Glyph Bridge, maybe using the Gnome. Or we can use something from Graveyard. I guess there's another Gnome there too. Although we actively want to draw. So now if they want to cast a spell, they can't attack, or vice versa. Can still play Artificer. And pass it back. Could also keep digging with Thrain Spider. So we still have quite a few options available. And Deep Cavern Bats means they can't attack now. Even if it can take our saw blades, could also play it just to uh, empty our hand. And so we have more artifacts in play, which is not unreasonable. Alright, Soaring City is pretty nice. Can uh, certainly bounce something, such as Tidebinder perhaps, although they have the mana to replay it. So instead, activate Spider and see where we're at. Mm, Foundry could still maybe get back a Spider, although unlikely to do that this turn. So, 5-6 can make it 7 with Artificer, although that one might want to chump. Alright, there's our leveler. That should help. Can start by blowing up Virtue of Loyalty. Can also go after some of their creatures, even though they have a plaza to protect. Or we could go for Virtue first. I think we need to deal with the creatures before they get out of hand. They are putting some faith in the bat growing. Sadly don't have Soaring City available. It's a pretty substantial attack. And a Soaring City on our Glyph Bridge, so now we can just replay it next turn. Which means we're gonna lose everything except for Thrain Spider, so this one can jump. Take 10. Can still get an attack in with Leveler first. So all in all, I think we're going to be pretty happy. Opponent cycles. Two mana left. And a Restless Fortress we'll need to keep in mind. Okay, so we first want to attack with a leveler. Destroy Virtue of Loyalty. Opponent can gain some more life back, that's fine. Could have also used Soaring City to punish the block. But we'll keep that one available. And then I uh, want to play Glyph Bridge. 
Maybe using Foundry. And then now our barracks is finally back to active. So we can play a call per call. And Mirex, what do we find? All right, not bad. Still have mana to activate Threat Spider. And it's not going to take much for Barracks to take over. And yeah, her opponent sees it riding on the wall and concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Just a bunch of Artificers ramping out Mightstone. And we can either draw or use them as a removal accordingly. Hopefully finding an Urza at some point. Copper Code Vanguard, all right. At least we've got our blockers back in case uh, Adlin shows up. We can block the 2-1 tokens. And then we can even pay for Thalia to still play our Mightstone and Weakstone. And there's Adlin. Not the best attack since we could double block. And then now Mightstone take out Adlin, paying the ward, which we can do using Mightstone itself. And then the next Mightstone could draw. Hopeful Initiate can eventually destroy artifacts. And a second Vanguard allows the first one to attack. Yeah, it would have been a pretty scary start with Adlin. Ooh, there's Urza. So now we're talking. So play Urza into another Mightstone. A little bit short of transforming right now. Could also keep the other Mightstone to answer a Brutal Cathar if that shows up. So we can eventually get Urza back and transform it. So a couple options here. Could also just play Mirex and then activate it. Keeping Mightstone for Brutal Cathar means next turn I played for 5 mana. Pay the ward. Get Urza back. Yeah, that seems still reasonable to me. And then for now we can activate Mirex. Yep. Do we double block a Vanguard? Don't hate it. Since um, it'll shrink down their team and then a single Artificer is still a good blocker. Spider's nice too. Okay, so play another Mightstone. Don't need Field of Ruin. Because of the ward, we would not have been able to play Mightstone and immediately transform the two had we kept double Artificer here because of uh, the ward. Get Urza back, play this for two mana, and then I guess we'll still be one short of uh, activating Mirex, but that's okay. And then if they have another Cathar, at least we've got a Thrain Spider that can find more action. Thalia, we don't really mind. Knight Errant is going to be too late at finding another Cathar. All right, so we finally get to meld. Finds another Adlin and Officer. Now a Leveler is tempting too. So let's see, if we transform Urza, that's seven mana. 
then I can get a double discount. Is that enough to still play a three mana or I guess four mana leveler? I don't think so. Yeah, we'll have three mana, but we lose the discount from Urza, gaining the double discount from the plus two. It's not quite enough to play leveler, but uh, I think we're all here to meld. So let's go for it. And then we can start by making some tokens. Do we want to exile anything in particular? Not really. Let's just make as many tokens as we can. And then next turn we can worry about taking out some stuff. Okay, adversary pumping the team can be effective. Although we can just jump with the four tokens we generated. And then if we draw into a glyph bridge, that would be great. Or we can just play leveler, take out adversary and take it from there. Don't think we want to double or triple block anywhere. Okay, so giving us a discount on our artifacts would also be effective. So maybe we want to draw, discard, and then get the discount, and then just empty our hand. Or we can make a pair of tokens and get the discount, which lets me play more stuff out as well. And then we're kind of building towards the minus 10 as well. So play leveler, destroy adversary. Play one mana spider. And make some more tokens. The power stones, I guess, are helping with adversary as well. So next turn I could plus two and then minus ten. Opponent has to pressure Urza, since they're going to lose their board otherwise. I guess Initiate can use the ability to remove a blocker, thanks to the Power Stone, so level her down. Okay, so they can prevent an ultimate now. But we get to take out some annoying creatures. Initiate maybe not too scary without a counter now. So Urzan takes two. Don't interfere with my test. And then we can maybe draw and discard here. Worst case scenario, I can play a leveler out of the graveyard with Unearth. Now Sawblades can answer Knight Errands. Probably don't need Iron Crag. And then we can draw to discard again. Finding a smithy, which is quite nice. Do we need foundry? I guess it does access might stone and weak stone again. So it's not the worst. So play foundry. Play a smithy. And then we'll still have saw blades available. which we could play right now on the Knight Errands. And no attacks. Okay. And then next turn, plus two into minus ten. The Power Stones make it a little easier for the Officer to activate. Finding Peacekeeper could name Urza, but then we'll just pay the two. And yeah, this is probably their last activation, finding Veteran. Do we get to ultimates? We don't. On to the next one.
Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Got some early blockers and mana acceleration. And then Spider can always be a decent mana sink if we don't find anything else expensive. Our opponent a red-green and Copper Line Gorge typically points towards aggro. For now play Artificer. Since Foundry we can maybe tamp the same turn we play it. So it can lead to a more efficient turn. I see dinosaurs perhaps. It is going to punish Sawblades, so I don't think we keep up Sawblades necessarily. Can just go Foundry into Spider. Could also triple Foundry, and then next turn, how much mana are we working with? Six, seven, potentially eight with a land. That's kind of exciting too. Just play a casual turn four leveler. And if not, we can still just main phase a saw blade to take out the raptor. Hulking raptor can help them play something expensive. And a might stone and weak stone still quite nice here. So let's see, if I play it, we can pay the ward to take out hulking raptor. And then still play the saw blades. I think that's good. Could also draw, but honestly, between Spider and Leveler, we've got enough in hand. And this is perfect, since Mightstone can pay for the ward. And then Sawblades to answer Raptor. And now we can play Leveler. Taking out Hulking Raptor with a land, especially. And that's enough for a concession. I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Couple ways we can sequence early. Let's see. Now maybe a Leaning Artificer. Although, if I play... Iron Crag, we could play Urza, and then with an extra white source still play Foundry. If I play Foundry now, then next turn I can play Iron Crag and still play Akal Pakal afterwards and trigger it. We're up against the domain deck and they already have full domain, so it's gonna be tough. Let's try this approach. And then next turn Iron Crag into the first among equals would enable it right away. Field of Rune could try to mess with the opponent's mana, but they already have triple Triland here. So that's going to be difficult. Okay, Bramble Familiar, so that changes what the opponent is up to. They're going to try and cast Invasion of Alara. And uh, there's no real way for me to stop it, I don't think. If we Field of Ruin... They have multiple green sources. Going for Rafine's Tower, opponent still has green. Can just get whatever basic they're missing. So I don't think we can really disrupt it. So in that case, I think we stick to our plan of uh, Iron Crag. Into Akal Pakal. And find a land versus Thrain Spider. I'll get the spider. Well, we'll see if our opponent can combo here on turn 4 already. With an invasion of Alara. Just a tap land and go for the throat. Well, this might be their only go for the throat if they're playing invasion of Alara. Since otherwise they wouldn't be guaranteed to hit Bramble Familiar. So now we're looking at Urza, unload a bunch of artifacts. But now they might have the invasion of Alara. 
No, just a Phyrexian Flash Gorger for seven. Okay. So what's next? Field of Ruin still not looking too great. Missing our uh, Might Stone and Weak Stone here. So, got to dig with Rand Spider to try and find it. Nothing in the graveyard that's going to help. And then... Find Smithy versus another Spider. Smithy looks decent. Although, I guess I didn't leave myself with enough white mana to cast it. I'll just grab another Spider. Good insurance in case they destroy one of them. And we're still looking for Mindstone and Weakstone, that's probably our best chance. Coggle and Idaro is next. Can fight Urza. Could triple block Flash Gorger to trade for it. Possible our opponent has a Virtue of Persistence in hand to eventually bring it back. But we are under quite a bit of pressure here. And they would only take out one Thrine Spider. Okay, so we can activate leaving Artificer untapped. Could also use Foundry to get access to another spider. So I'm gonna tap a bit more carefully now. Five, six, seven. And there's our Might Stone as well as a Leveler. Both are decent options. Without Urza and another one going to the bottom, maybe Levelers are a better choice. And then Foundry can get back another Spider. Well, I guess it's not letting me select Automated Artificer, which is strange. Well, I guess we go with Spider and still get an extra token out of the deal. But seems like Foundry's a little bugged. Pass it back. Opponent cycles. And there's the fetch quest to finally go off. Finding a leyline binding or virtue persistence. Can destroy Virtue with Leveler, so that's not a huge problem. Goes for Binding on Iron Crag. That's not too bad. Take seven. And then. Might actually be better off destroying the Familiar, so they can't pick it back up and. Use fetch quests. Let's see, five, six, seven with a land, because they can use the power stone to activate the ability. But it would still need an extra land as well. So it's not super likely. Yeah, maybe just taking out Coggle is fine. And then. And we can uh, keep a blast soon and Field of Ruin. Alright, so we get to take a blast soon. And our opponent's probably planning to pick up their own familiar here. So I'll start with a Thrine Spider activation, see what we can find. Another Mightstone and Weakstone. And I'll 
just draw since taking out familiar is not going to accomplish much. And then Artificer we can play. And then I suppose we can respond with Sawblades on Familiar if they try and pick it up. We can still destroy Leyline Binding. And then Familiar is going to attempt to Trump Spider and then pick it up to soak up two damage. And in response to the ability, we can saw blades. Opponent falls to 17. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand, some early ramp into Glyph Bridge, and then a leveler to take over. Facing what could be a domain deck. So Field of Rune could try and mess with one of their tri lands. Might be just Junt after all. Let's go with an Iron Crag. I guess the upside of Foundry first is that I could have then next turn played Iron Crag and still maybe activated its Field of Rune. Brotherhood's End destroying artifacts. They might regret playing it this early. And our opponent's got their own Field of Ruin, so we don't want to play Mirex or Field unless we can deal with theirs first. But Spider looks good here. If they have more Brotherhood's End in their deck, we're going to be pretty sad. Demolition field. Our opponent's packing a lot of land destruction. So not sure what to make of their deck. A big score. They might be playing with Arcane Bombardment to get their instants and sorceries back from the graveyard. Or maybe just playing Chandra to copy big score, which is also pretty nice. Okay. This one we're going to want to trigger maybe with Foundry here. Can play Mirex for the time being. Although Mirex plus Akalpakal is also pretty nice as a way to enable it, so maybe we don't mind if Field of Ruin gets answered. Sure. Hit for two. And end of turn, we'll get a, an extra card here. And Smithy looks good. Dodges Brotherhood's end. So we'll see if they have an Arcane Bombardment here. A leveler could be an answer to it if we get to 8 mana. It's going to be an Archfiend instead. Okay. That's unexpected. And I go for the throat which doesn't have many targets outside of uh, Akal Pakal and Urza. So now Glyph Bridge looks good. Can wait on Smithy. And uh, that's going to be it for now. If I activate Field of Ruin, one, two, three, four, five, I guess we could still do that. Sure. Take out the Proving Ground. And attack for two. So no green mana outside of the treasure. Possible they're just playing Proving Ground for the cycling ability as a black-red tap land. Alright, Chandra also makes a lot of sense. I'm good with big score. It's, time to do something. it's gonna add mana. And a Virtue doubled can take out our spider. Okay, but now we should be able to play a leveler, which is a nice answer to Chandra. And 
if their main interaction is go for the throats, they'll have a hard time answering our 8-8 artifact. Next turn we can play Smithy, and at the very least activate Mirax to make an extra artifact, which is actually pretty relevant when it comes to turning this into the barracks. I guess with barracks we would have preferred taking out their Field of Ruin and Demolition field, because they can just destroy it before we get an extra token out of it. Opponent with another brother at its end was bound to happen. Okay, now what's attack with Leveler, and then could also transform Glyph Bridge into a creature. Or we could stick to the plan of Smithy Activate Mirex, which I don't mind. Although I guess now we're a little bit short on mana to do that. So Foundry into Smithy might be the play instead. So we are threatening lethal. And then next turn we could transform Glyph Bridge, I suppose. And that's enough for a concession. I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn one Gnome, turn two Artificer, turn three Smithy, potentially. And that's gonna help out if we're up against aggro. A red green and a scamp. Keeping the gnome alive still helps grow our uh, token from Smithy, but I'm not opposed to blocking to soak up some damage. All right, turn to Ruby into Swiss Pier. They don't have a great attack. Could now also go with Foundry into Thran Spider, and then when we play Smithy, the token's gonna be pretty big. So it's more likely to survive. It's also just an efficient use of our mana here. And if I play Smithy now, I still won't be able to transform it next turn. So I don't hate this. Not sure if they have too many ways of using the Power Stone other than activating Mirex. Audacity is a good one. And Ruby also gets buffed. And they'll likely have a pump spell here. So I could jump with a Gnome on Ruby. I could just take it for now, keeping an extra creature for Smithy. So we can more easily transform it next turn as well, or in two turns. How big is our token going to be? We've got five, six, seven. Seven, seven's pretty big. Yeah, let's just take it for now. And another scamp is next. Play a smithy. And pass a turn. And then we're hoping to find another permanence to make use of a transform smithy. No attacks, that's great for us. And we found a cityscape leveler. Now let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. So. I could cast a leveler if I don't transform Smithy, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna be one mana short of transforming Smithy and casting leveler this turn. I think playing leveler is more important. And then destroy Swiss Spear. Or we could destroy a Scamp while it's only a 1 1. Since that's one way they could wombo combo us. And then let me just hang back. We're not in a hurry. And our opponent's less likely to burn us out than typical mono red. Questing Druid's pretty good, finding Godric, although we've got a Reach creature at least. Let's 
Opponent's going all out, which is interesting. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, our hand has potential. Lots of ramp to set up an early leveler. That's our game plan. May or may not work out. Plaza of Heroes pointing towards a legendary deck. Could be Esper. Start with Artificer. Might be met by Make Disappear. Could be a token from Virtue of Loyalty, which we can now maybe block. Could still see Rafine. We don't. And our opponent's not even gonna fake an attack. So they likely still have a Make Disappear in hand. So I'm gonna want a double spell as opposed to tap out for a Thrain Spider. I guess we can go Iron Crag into Thrain Spider potentially. So let me start there. Could also just play another Artificer and play Gnome. And then save Thrain Spider for a later turn when we can pay for Make Disappear more easily. Okay, that all resolves. Could see Malcolm end of turn, or just another token. Fair enough. So with Thrain Spider we're setting up a leveler on the following turn. Shieldred we can potentially take out. Ooh, and a Might Stone, that was a perfect draw. Takes out Shieldreds and allows us to still play Thrain Spider. Drawing is tempting, but we may not need to draw too many more cards if a leveler can stick the landing. Plus we also have Thrain Spider as a mana sink, so I don't think we should get too greedy. And then leveler could destroy Virtue of Loyalty, now we'll just take out Shieldred once again. Glyph Bridge, also potentially an answer if our opponent goes big with Virtue, but uh, it's a leveler time. No attacks, and that's enough for a concession. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our blue white artifact deck in action, and the deck definitely has some awesome synergies, can be quite explosive thanks to the many 2 mana ramp options we have in standard now, and then the late game of uh, a barracks making a large token turn after turn is quite powerful, and occasionally we even get to meld Urza, which is also a lot of fun. Now is the deck actually going to be competitive in the ranked ladder? I kind of fear for it, just because the moderate aggro matchup is still not great, even with some of our measures like the early gnome, they can still overrun us before we manage to set up our powerful synergies, and then some of the more controlling decks in the meta, like Domain, can still kind of go over the top, since they have enough interaction for our various artifacts, in the form of Leyline Binding, even both Seiju can be kind of annoying, and then Atraxa provides a bit too much value for us to deal with, so I'm afraid the deck's not quite there in terms of competitiveness, but it's still a lot of fun. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!